everyone, we're going to get you up and running fast in Adobe InDesign. I'm Juliette Davis, a professor of communication and digital media, and InDesign is the go-to program for laying out print and electronic documents of all sorts. Whether you're laying out a business report, an ad, a newsletter, a portfolio, a magazine, a downloadable white paper, you name it, it's the program. So we're gonna design this document because if you can lay this out, you can lay out just about anything in InDesign. So let's get started. Okay, first launch InDesign and then click Create New or New File. Now we have a couple of options. You can select presets for print, web, and mobile dimensions or you can fill in your own dimensions over here. We're gonna start with a standard dimension for print magazine, so click on print, and then view all presets, and choose the A4 preset. If we go over here and we change picas to inches, we'll be able to see the dimensions of our document in inches, or you can use the unit of measure you like. In this panel on the right, we're also going to enter the rest of our page specifications. So for example, portrait orientation, one page, four columns, and a gutter space that's the default. A gutter space is the space between columns. For margins, we want different margins for the top and bottom than we do on the sides because we're going to have pagination and other elements at the bottom. So click on the unlink button and set your margins to 0.75 on top and bottom. and the inside and outside margins are going to be 0.5 inches. Then set a bleed of 0.125 inches on all sides. A bleed will give us this effect where a photo appears to be running off the edge of a page, and we can give that effect to any elements that we like. And we're gonna talk more about this soon. We don't need any slugs, so click Create. Okay, let's take a look at our page. This white edge is the edge of our page. The purple line inside is our margin. The type will stay inside those margins, as will all other elements except for our bleeds, which are going to flow outside. By the way, if you need to change your page settings after you've created a document, just go to File, Document Setup, and you can make changes. Or if you forgot to make columns, just go to Layout, Margin and Columns. Okay, so we see our column guides here. Keep in mind, we can make custom columns. We don't have to set them up ahead of time. In fact, you can open up a new page, set some new guides where you want them and create text boxes anywhere you like. We're just using preset columns to make it easier. Now let's look at the bleed line. This is that red line outside the page. So how do bleeds work exactly? Well, a bleed shows an image going all the way to the edge of a page, which we see here with a photo. The top color bar, the line at the bottom bleeds off to the right, and the graphic for the page number bleeds down. So a bleed gives a professional look. It's kind of dynamic, exciting. So most layouts have bleeds, but to get that effect with the printed document, the printer has to actually print this on a larger sheet of paper and then trim it back to our paper size. So anything we want to appear on the edge of the page actually needs to be pulled all the way out to our bleed line for that bigger sheet of paper. Now, this is not the case in electronic PDFs that you're passing around an email or placing on the web, but print's a little more complicated. So now let's look at getting around an InDesign. 
You want to know how to get around your page. So to zoom in and out, hold down the Alt key or Option key if you're on the Mac and use this mouse or your trackpad to zoom in and out. When you're zoomed in, you can also move your page around with the mouse pretty easily. And if you double click the hand tool, that will bring your document back into your screen and fill the page. Those are some of the main tools we use to get around. Now let's look at the toolbar on our left hand side. And if you don't have your toolbar appearing there, go to Window and Tools and it will appear. Now look to the right side of your workspace. By default, you'll probably see panels, but we're going to change this so that a control bar appears at the top as well that's really quick and easy to use. It will also have panels on the side. So go to Window, Workspace, and Advanced. Now when you click on a tool, like the text tool, you'll see at the top all the options that relate to that tool. So you can make changes quickly. Now I'm going to bring an image of our layout into this file so we can see it as we work. And I'm just going to have it off to the side. To do this, I'm going to go to File and Place, which is how we bring in images and documents. And we'll get into that much more later. But there we are. We're going to start by creating our guides on the page. This is how we plan where the elements are going to be laid out. So for example, the headline, the photo, the tops of the columns, where are these going to be? To plan them, we're going to use the ruler at the top. And if your ruler isn't in inches, just right click inside of it and change the unit of measure to inches. You can do the same with the left hand ruler as well. So guides help us to see where we're going to place those elements on the page. And to get them, make sure you're on your selection tool and then click inside your ruler at the top and drag down. Now you should see a guide on the page and we can even move around this guide after we've dropped it there or we can make it disappear entirely by dragging it on up to the top again. So I'm going to drag a guide down to where I believe the headline will be approximately at the top. It doesn't have to be exact. We can move it around later. Another guide where we think the bottom of the headline will be. Another guide for the top of the quote. Another for the bottom of the quote, which is also the bottom of the photo since those two things happen to align. And then the top of the last two columns of text, which will appear below the photo. And we have a few other elements as well we don't really need guides for. The vertical ruler can be pulled out as well, as you can see, but we already have our column guides, so we don't need that. So that's how we set up documents and guides. And next we're going to add text.